Welcome to the Big Book Roundtable in the RICO 12 family of recovery resources targeted at people from all backgrounds, faiths, and places dealing with addictions of all varieties. RICO 12 is also a resource for the loved ones of addicts. I'm Justin B., a child of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a multidisciplinary addict living in miraculous recovery and am blessed to be the moderator of this roundtable. I'm joined today by David G, Nikki M, and Ashley S, and we're excited to be here today to read and swim through the big book with you. David, why don't you please introduce yourself and tell us maybe a 12th step uh, experience that you've had in the last day or two, a real quick one. Hey, everybody. I'm David G. I'm an alcoholic and an addict of many sorts from Oklahoma, grateful for a recovery date and Alcoholics Anonymous of August 8th, 1994, and emotional recovery date of uh, October of 2019. Uh, very glad and grateful to be here with you guys. Justin, thank you so much for all you do. Ashley, Nikki, always a pleasure to sit at the table with you guys. 12-step experience in the last couple of days. I had a guy reach out to me from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, in very bad shape. In fact, you know, the title of his email said, At Life's End. And I always kind of chuckle because that's really where we feel like we're at when we come to this. But through the grace and power of the loving God, as he reveals himself through the 12 steps as outlined in this book, grace and mercy fall upon us. And then we're able to see that it wasn't life's end. It was the beginning. So maybe life ended as he knew it, but life as he will know it will be much, much better. So we start tomorrow in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, reading through and doing what we do here. We'll start with 10 and 11. We will learn self-examination, prayer, and meditation from the very beginning. Then we'll move to the front of the book and begin to pick it apart and see what's really the problem. If the problem is drinking, the problem is sex, the problem is food, just don't do that anymore. There shouldn't be any more problem. But once you take those things away, it seems like another problem begins to emerge, and that's within the mind. So that's what we will tackle. That's been an experience over the last couple of days. Thanks. Beautiful. Ah, thanks, David. That's an awesome uh, 12-step experience, and thanks for introducing yourself. Nikki, your turn to introduce yourself with a quick 12-step uh, experience from the last couple of days for you. Hi, I'm I'm Nikki M, and I'm a grateful member of this and many other fellowships. And I, I like David said, I'm just so grateful. I, I'm smiling ear to ear. People can't see us out there, but I think all four of us are smiling right now. We got on and saw each other after, after our little hiatus. Anyway, 12-step uh, experience, here it is. God did for me what I could not do for myself. I was upset. I copped a re resentment. As you know, a resentment will kill. And it was against my sponsee. And I'm like, oh, you know, just like forget her. And I had some other foul language. And then literally as I'm hanging up, and she's been not only my sponsee, but my friend, like crazy. I love her to death. My phone rings. It's a woman I've never heard of, Nikki. And she tells me her story. Well, doesn't she come from America too? Doesn't she have blonde hair also? Hasn't she been in the room like this sponsee for 20 years dying on her thoughts? And I was like, God not only sent me a sponsee, but twinning just like the one I was angry at. And then a few days later, of course, I kissed and made up, admitted my wrongs. And now I've got, you know, I, it's just miracles. God will always do for me what I cannot do for myself. Grateful. Love it. Thanks, Nikki. All right, Ashley, same questions for you. Well, introduce yourself, 12-step experience. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley S. from North Carolina. I'm a recovered sex addict and codependent and a grateful member of All Addicts Anonymous and Al-Anon. Um, so grateful, Justin, for your service as always and to be able to sit at this table, virtual table with you, Nikki and David. 12-step um, experience in the past week. I have gotten the opportunity now to... Um, really learn about other addictions through my, through my sponsees, like skin picking, debtors anonymous. That was totally new to me, just being a sex addict. So it's uh, the, the problem is still the same, no matter what the addiction is, but how that looks, you know, with what we do and those behaviors, that's something that um, I'm grateful for that opportunity to learn more about. So thank you. Excellent. I love it. Everybody diving into their 12th step and getting busy with the work. Appreciate it. And it's an, it's an honor to sit around this virtual table with such a dedicated servants, agents of, a, of an all-powerful God. All right. Today, we're going to, as we dive into the big books, everybody grab your big books, get out pen, paper, highlighters, whatever it is, so you can take notes here. We are going to focus on the table of contents, which starts on uh, page Roman numeral five, which is a V. 
And we're just going to read through those table of contents and take and get a, get a few uh, uh, insights and dive deep on this. So here we go. I'm going to read this. Contents. Preface. Um, I'm not going to read the page numbers. I'm just going to read the chapter headings. Preface. Forward to first edition. Forward to second edition. Forward to third edition. Forward to fourth edition. The doctor's opinion. Bill's story, and this is where we finally get out of the Roman numerals and get into the regular numbers, but all of those Roman numerals are vital. So Bill's story. There is a solution. More about alcoholism. We agnostics. How it works. Into action. Working with others. To wives. The family afterward. To employers. And a vision for you. All right. So we've got a lot in there, a lot of, I love that it's it's laid out so um, orderly. And as I'm familiar with the program, it makes a lot of sense. But let's jump in there and talk about those things. We'll start today with David. Based on the, the reading there, uh, tell us a little bit about your insights into the table of contents and how, you know, some of the things that you find of, of value in that. <clears throat> well, thank you, Justin. Anytime that uh, I work somebody through the book, as I was taken through the book, we always look at the table of contents. My first thought was, how did this have anything to do possibly with what we're going to be doing coming up here? You know, it's just the table of contents. It's pretty straightforward. But as I look at it, and as you described, the preface forward to the first, second, third, fourth edition, they had me to draw a line under forward to the fourth edition. To the left of that, they had me to write general, general information because that's basically what we're going to be looking at, the history of Alcoholics Anonymous, how it came to be. And general information, there is a lot of vital information in the beginning of those editions. And so that's something I never really paid a lot of attention to. Now, the doctor's opinion, uh, Bill's story, there is a solution, more about alcoholism. That, that's all step one. Every bit of that reading, every bit of that work through there is step one. We're going to call that the problem and the diagnosis. We're going to look at the problem. We're going to look at the diagnosis. We draw a line usually under we agnostics, and we look at that as the solution and a prescription. And that's all too. That entire chapter is devoted to step two. <clears throat> usually after chapter six into action, you know, we usually draw, draw a line under there and we look at the description, uh, the directions for the prescription and how to find a solution. Now, how it works they all involve steps three and four into action steps five through 11 and then working with others. Of course, that's all step 12. Anything after that to the wives, family, afterwards, employer, vision for you. Those are all areas of life after the spiritual experience has taken place. I think those are the lost chapters in Alcoholics Anonymous. Not too many people really dive into those deep as we do when we go through the work. But I know that the first seven chapters brings that awakening from self. These are other areas of life after that. And if I'm not into these, really, I'm missing a vital part of this because I spend a lot of time with my wife. I spend a lot of time with my family, a lot of time with my employer. And what, of course, is my vision. So this is very important information right here in the very beginning. Now, the personal stories you see at the bottom, that's just identification only. So. Really, that's my experience. There's more, but um, I want to share with uh, the rest of the people around the table. So thank you for calling on me. Thank you, David, and appreciate that. All right. Um, uh, let's let's jump over to Ashley real quick and and uh, have her give a little bit of her take on, on the table of contents. Thank you. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you so much, David. That was spot on. Um, a couple of things, if I had to point out some other key parts of this uh, first page is under Dr. Bob's nightmare. Um, our co-founder of AA, the birth of our society dates from his first day of permanent sobriety. So um, one of uh, one of the things we talked about previously was, you know, there's the first promise of the big book is the story of how um, men and women have recovered. Well, here it is again. It's saying this is the second promise of recovery, his permanent sobriety. Um, and the other things that stand out to me on this page is that the first 43 pages are on step one. Um, so just staying sober doesn't solve the problem. I need to work the rest of the program in order to recover. And that's the first 164 pages. 
Um, and I think the last thing that jumps out to me is that if I don't do this work and recover, uh, speaking from my own experience, I put this above everything else. I didn't take time away from my job, but it was more important than my job. It was more important than my family than anything else, because if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have a spouse. I wouldn't have a family. I wouldn't have an employer and I wouldn't have a vision. So that, that was, that would be my experience from this. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Ashley. I love that, uh, that wrap up of the last couple of uh, chapters there with that. I never seen it that way. Beautiful. Nikki, uh, why don't you do the same thing? Tell us a little bit about your insights from that table of contents. Well, I was just so excited that, um, that I'm diving so deep into this book because as you know, I skip around. So I asked all three of my sponsors, the previous and one's current, why did we never go through the table of contents? So that was my first question to them after I knew Ashley and David were really armed in this area. And, and I thought, number one, Nikki, our behavior patterns vary. Don't look at anyone else's program because if they know it so good, you can learn. Don't feel bad if you don't know it. And then when they said to me, well, honey, you were dying. I had to get you right through the steps. I kind of understood that. And then my other sponsor, who is 30 years AA, said the same thing. I don't mess with that. So it was very interesting to hear. And of course, the person who worked the workbook, Cameron F., who I work closely with, um, again, same thing. It's like, Cam, you didn't take me through. He's like, I didn't see a need to. Then I went to my sponsor, who's going line by line through the book. I said, what's your experience with this? Because when I took you through, you we didn't go through. And he's, he's sober. He's sober. But he wanted a new experience with another, like going line by line. You know, and he laid it out just as David did right now, just as Ashley did. When he got to the last part, my mind blew, my brains exploded everywhere because he said, to the wives, the family afterwards, to the employers, and a vision for you. That's the second part of step 12. Just exactly what he, Ashley was saying is that, you know, it says, we practice these principles in all our affairs. These all are our affairs. Our wives, our husbands, our children, our family after, all that, our employers, and our affairs is the vision that this book provides for us. So it, my, I was just like, oh, that is the second part. And David said it. This is where my golden nuggets come from. How I live is in that back part of the second part of step 12. So I'm just excited. And oh, and a little fun fact is I just write fun facts on the table of contents. One of the best selling books of all times, over 3 million copies sold. God is mentioned 134 times in the first 164 pages, additional references. Uh, and, and, and then it goes on and on. And basically it's God, the word in various forms is mentioned over 400 times, inclusive of the stories. And I just love these factoids of my magic book. Thank you. Mm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nikki. Man, I, once again, as as we read through this, kind of like uh, as we're going through other parts, like what Nikki said, you know, it seems so why? Because when I read a, a, a novel, when I read a, a self-help book, as I glance at the table of contents, rarely do I even glance at it. I go to page one, I skip over the Roman numerals, I, you know, all that stuff and go right into what I think is the meat. And we're getting into stuff that is real meat here. I've got a couple of questions for, for uh, you all to dive a little bit deeper into, into this here based on what you shared. David, I know it's hard. It's really hard to pick favorites in, in, in a book like the big book that's, you know, so deep and, and, and uh, important to you. But what chapter in there that we just went through as reading the table of contents is one that you look at and go back to most often that is your favorite go-to type chapter and why? Well, hands down for me, it would have to be we agnostics. And for the longest time, I thought that that chapter was talking about belief in God or belief, you know, that I had to come to believe in a power greater than self. But if you read the title of step two, which is on page 59 of our book, it says we come to believe that a power. It doesn't say we come to believe in a power. And that was big. That was big for me. It really was because I come in here with old ideas about God, about religion, about all of this stuff. That chapter really changed all of that for me. It really provided me with a sense that I'm really not looking for belief. So I'm here with that. I'm looking to connect to power, which I've lost. <laughs> and so the chapter says, obviously, you know, that's what the book's all about. 
this main object is is to enable you to find a power which will solve your problem, not help you solve it, not send you somewhere to solve it. Go through the work as outlined in the book, and this power will solve that problem for you. So really, you know, lack of power, that's my dilemma. Not lack of belief, not lack of trust, not lack of faith, not lack of power. And that chapter provided that for me when I was able to realize it. That's my experience with that, Jesse. Uh, thank you, David. And and that's a really powerful chapter for me, too, that I, you know, first couple of times through as I would skim through the big book, I'd go, I'm not an agnostic. I believe in God. I'm, this this doesn't mean anything to me. But man, as I've dug into it, it is very powerful. Thanks for going into that a little bit, David. All right. Next question I've got for Ashley. Ashley, you mentioned in your in your share that, hey, the first 42 basically pages of the big book are dedicated to step one. Um, tell me why you think, at least in your experience, why is that so important to spend so much time on the the concept of I'm powerless over my addiction and my life has become unmanageable? Great, great question, Justin. Thank you for that question. Um, if I don't see how I am powerless, the methods that I have tried to do in order to control, then I am never going to be able to be even willing to believe in a higher power or think that I need a higher power self. I'm going to think that I can do it on my own in some other way. Basically, as the book says, I'm going to try and find door number three. I'm not going to try and accept spiritual help. I'm just going to keep blotting out, you know, until the, the bitter end. So for me, I need to look and see, you know, about what's the mental obsession that I have, the physical allergy that I have. Um, because there's no other way to conquer that other than having the spiritual awakening as the result of going through these steps. Um, so that's why to me, it's, it's so important to say, thank you. Thanks, Ashley. And Nikki, um, question for you, you know, one of the things that I often say as I'm working with, with a sponsee is, you know, when I'm working with you, I get as much of more out of this than, than you probably do. There's more that is revealed to me through you. And in your share, Nikki, you mentioned that, you know, you went through and we're asking the question about the table of contents. Why wasn't this covered? And your sponsee is the one who shared that with you. Tell us a little bit about how important that is to be open to learning from those that you're sponsoring even in this process. Well, I have to keep an open mind every single day. That's the, you know, as we learn is the essentials. So I remind my sponsee because I've been taught this. And the way I've gone through the book is a little different. So first thing I was taught is that helping others is the foundation stone of my recovery. So, and then I was taught that actually they are helping me more than I'm helping them. That was burned into my consciousness even before I opened a book. Um, So I had to really keep an open mind that my sponsee, that's not even in the book, sponsor, sponsee. It says we commence shoulder to shoulder. So the prospect is, is helping me and I need to learn. I, it took some humility to call him up and say, uh, excuse me, sir, what did your sponsor teach you about the table of contents? And I just felt, um, I just was awesome. It was an opportunity for me to grow in effectiveness and understanding. So I just, I'm really every day, like I'm in spiritual kindergarten every single day. I'm never getting a you graduated diploma here because I won't, it doesn't work that way. I can never stop learning in this book and in this lifetime. Thank you, Nikki. And you know, I've, I've recently had this image come into my mind. You mentioned, you know, I I don't get a diploma. Um, I'm in spiritual kindergarten. You know, I, in my mind, I used to have this image of, Hey, when I finish the 12 steps, I get a diploma. I get one of those square graduation caps with a little tassel. I flip it over to the other side. I've since realized that for me now, the image is I get through the 12 steps with my sponsor. With my sponsor. I walk a sponsee, as a prospect as, as it's in there through the 12 steps. And upon the quote unquote completion of step 12, I give them a hard hat and I say, time to get to work. It's not a graduation cap. It's a hard hat and time to get to work. Um, And not that you weren't getting to work in the process, but man, time to dig in. Well, let's jump into to a wrap up here. Man, I'm so grateful for you guys. Let's each take one minute um, to wrap up a takeaway that you had from going through this process. We'll start with David, if you wouldn't mind uh, a takeaway here. 
Well, the takeaway for me is is that I always feel the the closer connection to the power uh, within. I uh, I think for me, or I know for me, when we went through this part of of the book and the contents, the way we did when I did this with a sponsor one on one. I think for the first time, it really gave me some hope as to what the book contained prior to me even diving into it. So, you know, the takeaway for me here is here is a subscription, provide a transformation. And I'm going to be able to not only be sober, but I'm going to be able to recover from a hopeless state of mind. And for so long, I thought that I was recovering from alcoholism, sex addiction, any of this. But I see now, and as we move through this process, you know, on through the weeks, I'm going to see, we will see that we're really recovering from self. And, and once that we have eyes on that, it's like the rest of that stuff just begins to disappear. So it's a beautiful takeaway. And we begin to see it right here, table of contents. So it's like Ashley said, you know, Dr. Bob's nightmare, permanent sobriety down toward the bottom of that sentence. That That's a promise. That's, that's a huge promise right there. So. Yeah, I'm very excited uh, to continue this. So thank you, Justin. Thanks, David. Ashley, what's a takeaway that you grabbed from this uh, this reading and this conversation? Well, thank you, Justin. Um, love this episode again. I think my takeaway, I've, I've got a lot of experience, and a lot of hope that's on this page. Um, I didn't come into Al-Anon until February of this year. And I'm going back through the book with an Al-Anon sponsor. And we're going through the book, book not out on literature, but it's been quite the journey to go through the first 43 pages and experience my own step one all over again in a different way. Um, but there's so much hope that's still here for me and working the rest of the program and what that will look like in months to come while we're still doing this round table. Um, so I am excited, or hopeful and grateful that there is permanent sobriety as an al member. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Now, Nikki, how about you? What takeaways do you have from this in a quick minute? Well, that I'm never too old to learn. You know, I'm like, I'm 50. I've got a degree from the School of Hard Knocks. I'm a retired burlesque entertainer. Don't mess with me. I know all. I know nothing. I know that's my takeaway. Nikki, you know nothing and you need to make yourself open to learn more. And then the biggest takeaway though, is you was, I heard you ask like, uh, David, what the fa- what's his favorite chapter? And I was like, you know, all the promises have come true on every single page here and every single chapter. So I just, I'm just excited. That's what they asked me to be enthusiastic and, and wholehearted. And I take this serious. So yeah, I'm just like, give me more. I'm like a little puppy at the screen reaching for you and Ashley and David going more, more, more. Love it. Thank you. All right. And I'm going to share a little bit of my takeaway. And I kind of alluded to this already because it just really opened my eyes. Um, those last few chapters um, entitled to wives, to the to the spouse, however you want to put that, to the family afterward, to employers and a vision for you. If I'm not working those first, uh, let's see, what, 100 or 103 pages before that, I'm going to lose those other things. And that's what life is all about. That's what that's what I'm doing this for is to, well, it's so that I can be of service to those entities and so that I can gain that vision and go through it. Uh, open my eyes. Thank you so much all for, for this. I'm going to do a closing reading and then we'll, we'll jump out of here. All right. Thank you all in the live audience and you, David, Ashley, and Nikki for joining with us to learn more about RICO 12 and what we're doing and how you can support these projects. Go to RICO12.com. Uh, to learn more about any of the other projects that Ashley, David, and Nikki discussed or are doing, check out the links in the show notes of the podcast, and we'll get those links to you so you can jump into their uh, and see what they're doing also and participate in the, their miracles of recovery. Join us in the Fellowship of the Spirit, everybody, and come trudge this adventurous and amazing road of happy destiny with us. Work it. You are worth it. Worth it.